Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're found in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 14 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 15 in the RSV. A Psalm for David. Brief Description. Lord, who shall dwell in thy tabernacle, or who shall rest in thy holy hill? In the time of Moses, the tabernacle was the place where, among other things, worship and sacrifices to God took place. It contained a golden lampstand or candle, often a menorah, a table containing special cakes or loaves of bread called showbread, which were kept in the tabernacle on a constant basis to serve as an offering to God, and most importantly, the Ark of the Covenant, which was always kept behind a veil so that the people couldn't even see it. This separation between man and God shows the great difference between our limited existence and his boundless perfection, but it also serves to encourage the sort of deep respect and reverence with which we should treat God so that we can more easily overcome our own pride and do his will, even in times of great temptation. The holy hill in this passage may refer to Mount Zion, a term used for various actual places throughout history, but also used to describe salvation and the heaven of God. Again, this conveys the message that no one is perfect enough to approach God's location. He that walketh without blemish, and worketh justice, he that speaketh truth in his heart, who hath not used deceit in his tongue, nor hath done evil to his neighbor, nor taken up a reproach against his neighbors. To be perfect in all of these ways is required in order to be worthy of approaching so closely to God, and no one had walked entirely without blemish at the time this psalm was written. In his sight the malignant is brought to nothing, but he glorifieth them that fear the Lord. Different types of people can expect different fates from God, with evil threatening people being reduced by him, though not actually removed from existence, and those who revere God being given glory by him. He that sweareth to his neighbor, and deceiveth not. This doesn't mean people who swear at their neighbors, it means people who make promises to their neighbors and keep those promises. He that hath not put out his money to usury, nor taken bribes against the innocent, he that doth these things shall not be moved forever. The practice of usury is currently known as interest. It's when one person lends money to another person, intending to be paid back more than they lent. And it was explicitly forbidden by God, yet the Israelites frequently refused to obey this part of the law. Taking bribes against the innocent means accepting money in exchange for some favor that causes harm to people unjustly. In this verse, the general theme is that we're expected to use our money honestly and justly rather than unfairly favoring one group over another or insisting on more than we deserve. People who avoid these sorts of unjust behaviors are sure to be saved by God and granted eternal life, which seems to be what's meant by shall not be moved. Unlike the last several psalms, this one is mainly a song of praise for God's perfection and a description of man's imperfections, as well as a few pointers for what kinds of things we need to do if we want to be worthy to approach God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.